Welcome back to the Perlworks channel, and if you have forgotten, my name is John. It has been a while. Uh, this watch cabinet uh, is something I started a, a while back, back in like the beginning of the summer, I think. But it's been a long time coming. It's been done for a little while, and I safely shipped it across the country, and it arrived in one piece, uh, so that's good. But anyways, what you see me doing here is getting some walnut milled up for the outer casework, and that's going to be, I believe, 3 quarter inch or 5 eighths inch material. And then my joinery of choice is going to be dowels, and uh, that's just something I'm comfortable with, and it's the quickest method for me to get the strength that I need for the project. So that's what I went with here, and then I can move on to routing a rabbit in the back, and that's going to hold the uh, shiplap, which I will show towards the end of the project. What you see here is an adjustable dado jig that I had been spending a lot of time working on. Uh, designing it, producing it. These are this is one of the prototypes, and in one of my past videos, I talked about that a little bit. And you can see how there's little inserts that give you the spacing you need for the dados that you want. Um, but I stopped working on this just because getting the production down was taking way more time and effort than I thought was necessary. So I moved on to some other things. I just routed this groove, and it didn't go far enough because the insert that I designed didn't go far enough and account for the guide bushing and things like that so I went back to the CNC router and cut out another one and that's what you see here so I'm just gonna get this one lined up get my 3 inch line lined up with the 4 inch line and then I'll put these pins in then go ahead and finish off that last eighth inch of a groove the jig works really well I just was having trouble replicating it and getting everything down to actually produce it for sale but as you can see the spacing for four inches worked perfectly uh, and then I went on and did that for the rest of the dados on the outer casework and then later on I'll do some more for the uh, dividers that are present in the inside of the case. I'm working on a little piece of scrap to make sure I can get the correct length for my divider here. And it's always good to use an actual physical piece as your reference and measure off the actual work piece as opposed to just measuring with a tape or going based on your drawing. Make sure that that piece actually fits and then you can go use that same stop on your crosscut sled to cut the actual work piece. With the divider in place, I can mark uh, where the dado stop on that board, and those will be my reference lines for the jig. You can see I have it set up here, and the walnut is protruding slightly out the side of the jig, and that's lined up with the pencil line that I just marked. And one of the great parts about this jig is getting dados on either face of a board lined up perfectly. Now, for those table saw truthers out there, uh, one of these dados is a through dado and the other one is stop. So getting a stop dado on one face and a through dado on the other is a really great part about this jig. I can get these short vertical dividers uh, in place. These will divide the drawers on the bottom of the cabinet. And then I can square up those stop dados that I just mentioned earlier. Just a little bit of chisel work. These are only 3 eighths of an inch wide dados so it doesn't take much work to get these squared up. Now I can slide the vertical divider in place and mark a line with my marking knife. And this will be the reference that I cut up against at the table saw here to create a haunch. And that way the divider or tenon will sort of overlap that uh, dado there. I left these vertical dividers wide so I'll come back and rip them down to width to match the depth of the cabinet and that's what you see me doing here. One of the requests from the client was to have some recessed lighting in the cabinet. We found some uh, undermount lights that are meant for you know, kitchens and things like that, and they can be held in place with a magnetic strip, and so they worked perfect for the situation. I created a template on the CNC to match the dimensions of the light, and then she used a pattern bit to route the recess. While I finish routing that recess, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot. 
This Black Friday, you'll be able to find some amazing deals at Flexispot.com. You can save up to 50% on some of their best products like the E7 Flexispot Pro Plus Standing Desk Frame. I've been using my standing desk for almost a year now and it's been great. Having the option to sit or stand is a game changer, especially if you've been sitting all day. It's nice to kind of stretch your legs and still get a little bit of work done. The desks can accommodate a variety of heights and even save a few of your often used heights. So in my case, I have one saved for where I like to sit and I have one saved for where I like to stand. And the third one I let to just keep random for my kids to mess with. I made a custom cherry top for mine that has a little squiggle to catch pens, but you can make your top however you would like, or even choose from their ready-made options. Check out FlexiSpot.com this week to take advantage of the best deals of the year this Black Friday. Thanks, FlexiSpot. Before gluing the cabinet together, I will pre-finish the inside with some shellac, and I actually did a dedicated video on this specific process. And if you remember that video, you'll know how long ago this project started. So uh, here we are. Anyways, I ended up just doing the outer casework for the first glue up and then I would add the vertical dividers, horizontal dividers in different stages just to make things a little bit easier on me and make sure that I could keep everything nice and square. And here I am adding some glue to the dados for the horizontal divider. I don't want to use too much glue here, even though I already pre-finished and squeeze out should be a little easier to clean up, I still don't want to have to deal with it. So I got a little bit of squeeze out out the front, but that's okay. Uh, so I'll get the horizontal divider in here clamped up, and then you can see it sort of bowing down a little bit with this clamping pressure. Uh, but the vertical dividers that I'm putting in right now will kind of pop those back up where they need to be. I was dreading the doors, so I decided to do the drawers first. So that's what you see me doing here, a little bit of joinery at the table saw, which is my typical half blind lock joint. And I'm pretty sure I did another, a video on this as well, a little bit more in depth on the thinner material, so I'll link to that as well. You can see how the joint comes together here, which is always a fun one to see come together because it's pretty simple to cut, but it looks a little more complicated than it is, so that's always kind of nice. Uh, and you can see how I'm getting them fitted with the hand plane here, just so that they fit into their cubbies uh, nice and snug. Um, but I also used a single piece of walnut across the length of this cabinet for the drawer front, so you can kind of see how that continuous grain works there. Further avoiding doing the doors, I moved on to the dividers, which will hold all of the watches. So this cabinet can hold I think close to 50 watches or so. On either side there's going to be a 7x3 grid work, which is what you see me cutting here, and then there's going to be some more holders in the middle. And so I have all these pieces taped together so I can gain cut them so that they're as accurate as possible. And then after that I can kind of do some sanding, glue them together, and then slip them into the cabinet. All right, I guess we'll do the doors. Uh, in my lumber milling video, which was the first part of this whole uh, build on my channel, uh, I saved a straight grain piece of lumber for the doors, and that's what you see here. I wanted the straight grain because these are all gonna be nice, thin, straight pieces of wood, and I wanted that grain to be able to be as dense as possible, and I didn't want any like wide cathedral grain to be on the doors, so that's why I saved the straight grain for these pieces here. And you can see that I'm doing a little bit of measuring with my rails and styles to make sure everything is uh, as accurate as possible. I did leave them a little wide because that way I can come back when I'm doing the fitting process and trim them up to get the reveals as accurate as I want them to be. And as usual, I'm using the dowel max again uh, for the joinery here. Just two dowels in each corner is enough to get the strength that I need. Then I can glue the doors up just using a little bit of um, 
glue <laughs> and a couple dowels. And these are pretty self-squaring as far as clamping is concerned. Uh, you don't need too much pressure, just kind of get the joint closed up and then check for square and you should be good to go. So one of the reasons I was dreading doing the doors is because there's a lot more than just making a door, right? You have uh, hardware involved, you have the reveals, you have to fit the doors, you then have to do glass in this situation. So there's a lot going on with these. So I ended up going with Horton Brass's hardware. These are the non-mortise hinges here. And I wanted to try these out because it is less work. You don't have to cut the mortises. Um, and it, it also kind of gives you the reveal you need right off the bat with how thick they are. So I wanted to try these out. They worked out pretty good. There's a little bit of adjustment involved with them. So you kind of do the first screw, get your height and reveal set, and then you can add the second screw on each side. You can see I got both doors there and they wouldn't shut because I left them a little wide like I mentioned. So now I can go back to the table saw cut a little bit off on each one and then I should be able to get the reveal that I want. The next step for these doors was to add the lock. So this is a half mortise lock which means that half of the lock is revealed I guess so you can kind of see the back of the lock uh, from the inside of the cabinet it's not fully encased in the wood so uh, I ended up using a video from Matt Cremona as help for this because he had a video on this exact Horton Brass's lock and so that was good enough for me to follow um, and it's simple enough there's a little bit of chisel work you have to vary the depths on different parts of the mortise that you're routing because there's different parts of the lock that stick out different depths so you kind of have to kind of sneak up on it and make sure you get the right fit and after that, you kind of add your two screws and you should be good to go. You do have to mark where the keyhole needs to be so there's a little bit of a bump on the lock that you can kind of make a dent in the wood and then you can drill the hole and you have to do a little bit of chisel work to kind of get the right shape um, but I did end up adding a escutcheon uh, to cover the keyhole it's just a little bit of a decorative flare which uh, I'll do later on in the project. There's a few other door things with the hardware that I didn't film, but they're similar enough to the locks that um, I didn't feel like filming it. But uh, moving on to the back, I decided to go with shiplap panels for this. I think this is kind of like the next step in making your furniture better is not using plywood. You know, using walnut plywood is it looks nice, but I think going to like solid walnut shiplap is even nicer. So this is the first time I've done this. And um, I used a process from one of Mike Pekovich's videos on fine woodworking to kind of help me with this. And so uh, it worked out nice. This is the middle piece to kind of encase everything. I think there's a couple ways you can approach shiplap and as far as where you start your, your boards. You can kind of start from the middle and work out or kind of start from the outsides and move in. And that's what I decided to do and kind of end with this little middle piece that I could trim down to fit perfectly. I guess we're coming back to the doors here. Um, we're using a rabbiting bit here to route the rabbit for the glass. And this is going to leave a rounded corner. So I'll come back with a chisel to square up all eight corners for both doors.
This is a really nice cabinet jig that was sent to me by True Position Tools. It's kind of the, the jig on the market for this type of thing, and it works really well. I've been meaning to show it to you guys. Uh, it's great for regular kitchen uh, cabinet hardware, but it can work pretty nice in this situation as well. I didn't catch much of the finishing process, but as I did on the inside of the cabinet, I used a couple coats of shellac for the rest of the finish. One of my favorite parts of this project is the mitered molding you see here. It has a rabbet so that it holds the glass in place nicely. And there's just a couple pin nails along each edge to hold everything in place. This is a little nerve wracking because you never know if some stray nail will just come you know, through the wrong end of the wood and break the glass. But uh, luckily that did not happen in this situation. This will be a hanging cabinet, so I did leave some room in the back rabbet for a French cleat, which is what I'm securing here with some screws. All right, that's it for this one. I'm really happy with how it turned out. There's a ton of little nuggets and projects involved in something like this. It's very detailed that you might not notice if you don't watch a video like this, right? There's the grid work, there's the door hardware, there's the little pieces in the middle that I didn't even film and show you guys. There's the drawers and everything like that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the processes that I did show or didn't show, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. Thank you guys.